Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at joint uh, discrete random variables. The joint, so we have the joint probability mass function of x and y given in the table below. So we have a, 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 a variable x and it has three possible values, a discrete random variable x, minus 1, 0 and 1. And likewise we have y which can take the values 0, 1 and 2. Okay. Here we have all of the joint probabilities of each, okay? So each possible pairing of a value of x and a value of y, what is the corresponding probability of that? For example, if the probability of x equal to one, x equal to one and y equal to one, the probability of that is one in 12, okay? That pairing, okay? So obtain the marginal distributions of x and y and calculate the expected value of x, the expected value of y, the variance of x and the variance of y. Okay, so the first thing is the marginal distributions of x, let's say. So this is essentially the row totals, okay? So essentially what we're going to do here is add up each row there, okay? So what we have there is 1 sixth plus 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth. 1 sixth can be written as 2 over 12, so 2 over 12 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 12, 4 over 12, and that gives us one third. Likewise, it's actually the same calculations here, just done in slightly different orders, one third and one third, okay? Um, and likewise, doing it for the marginal probabilities of y, just get the column totals there, okay? The same way, but just working along the columns. Add up all the columns, and you will get one third, one third, and one third. So essentially, this is the summation of one sixth, one twelfth, and one twelfth, okay? Now, this is going to be, I'm going to do this very quickly here This in this particular case, but essentially it, the expected value of x and the expected value of y are can be deduced fairly quickly. It's essentially the expected value of x equals zero, the expected value of y is equal to one, essentially because each of them are, each outcome is equally probable. Each, uh, each value of x is equally probable, each value of y is equally probable. You can work it out using this formula here. I'm going to sort of skip past that in this particular video. Uh, this is the marginals. Each, each value of x, minus 1, 0, and 1, and each corresponding probability, 1 third, 1 third, 1 third. Do that for y as well, and you should get these answers here. Now, Okay, so the explicit calculation. So that's how you do it by explicit calculation. It's probably okay to spot it in this case now. So what we're gonna do here is, there's a slightly different approach I'm gonna take here for calculating the variance, okay? So what I'm gonna do in this particular approach is there's a, there's a, a, a different way of calculating the variance of X and the variance of Y, okay? But in this video, I'm just going for something else. Usually the way I would do it is the variance of Y minus the equals the expected value of x whoops squared minus the expected value of x to be squared now that's the way i would usually do it but in this particular instance i'm just going to show a different approach where it's x minus x bar squared times the probability of x and sum that up that's this is a, just a different approach to do it okay so essentially here x bar is that the expected value of x is the mean here. That's the mean. So the expected value of x, that comes in here. The expected value of y, that's coming in here, that one there, okay? So essentially what we're gonna do is for each possible value, of x, subtract the mean, square it, and multiply it by the probability. Here the probability in each case is one third, okay? So minus one minus the mean zero, or the expected value, square that, you get minus one squared, that just turns out to be one. Zero minus zero divided by three, zero minus zero squared divided by three, zero minus one, oh, sorry, one minus zero to be squared over three. So that's one third plus zero plus one third, that equals to two thirds. Likewise, same sort of calculation here down below for y. y. The three possible values are y are 0, 1, and 2. 
In each case, what we do is subtract the mean. So subtract minus one from each of them. And then what we do is we square it. And then multiply by the probabilities, which in this case is one third. So divide by three, in other words. And we actually get the same value here, two thirds. Okay, so that's just a different approach to the one I would usually take. Okay, but you know, it's sort of good to sort of know it in case you see it in the textbook. Okay, so obtain the conditional probability, the, the conditional distribution of y for each possible value of x, and hence show that the expected value of y given x being some particular value is a linear function of x. Okay. So the conditional distributions of y for each value of x are as follows. Okay, so the essentially what we're doing here is the we're just reforming this here. So one sixth, one twelfth, and one twelfth. That's four over twelve. Okay. So the conditional distribution is that if x is equal to 1 and we know it's equal to or sorry minus 1 what is the probability probability that is equal uh, y is equal to 0 y is equal to 1 y is equal to 2 okay so it's essentially um reorganizing this information here or so Essentially what we're doing is sort of rewriting in a way such that the totals are one in each case and just making sure that we have the right uh, proportions laid out. So given that x equal to one, probability that y is equal to zero given that x equal to minus one is one half, okay? Because it's one half of the four over 12 for the joint probabilities, okay? Now you can, you essentially can do this by inspection. It's just actually understanding what exactly we're being asked here, the conditional distributions, okay? So the total of the conditional distributions should add up to one. So just make sure that you have the right proportions laid out here, okay? That's really the gist of it, okay? So, you can do it by calculation, but just actually, it's a bit long-winded. For this example, you should be able to do it by inspection, okay? So, for example, uh, here what I've done here is the expected value of y, given that x equal to minus 1, equals the, the three values of y by the corresponding probabilities. Add them up, and we get 0 0.75. Likewise, for these two here, 0 one and two, given that x is equal to zero. So the probabilities are one half, sorry, one quarter, one half and one quarter, or 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.25. So that's equal to one, and there we go. Uh, the expected value of y given x equal to minus one, done the same way, and it is 1.25, okay. Now, we have to show that this is a linear function of uh, the expected value of y is a linear function of x, okay? So, essentially just sort of like stating it in terms of an arithmetic progression is sufficient here. Or an arithmetic series, if you will, yeah, progression. Okay, so we have, um, Minus one, minus one, zero, and one. The expected value of y, given that x equals 0 0.75, one, and 1.25. It's essentially just to sort of demonstrate that there is a consistent increase Uh, sequentially in both that's it really okay that's all you have to do that's all, just to sort of demonstrate x goes up by plus one the y's go up by 0 0.75 1 and 1.25 okay now just say for argument's sake this was 2 
here instead and the expected value 1.50 you can that would that would work as well it's just it helps that in this particular question just make life easy minus one zero and one are sequential integers okay now find the expected value of y uh, the expected value of x well, x times y and deduce the covariance of x and y and the correlation of x and y are x and y independent okay so what we're going to do here is first off calculate the expected value or the cars the 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 expect uh, the expected value of x times y okay what we have to do in each case so let's say minus one and zero is we just have to calculate it out and then multiply it by the probability, one sixth, okay? So it's minus one times zero times one sixth. Then we have x equals uh, minus one, y equals one, minus one, one, and the probability there is one twelfth and so on. So there's just a good bit of number crunching and a lot of the numbers immediately go straight to zero, okay? So I've actually probably done a little bit more than I should have there. So that like quite a few of them will go to zero automatically. So essentially what we end up with is one minus one twelve plus my minus two over twelve plus one over twelve plus two over six, and that works out to be one over six. Okay. So getting the covariance of x and y is using this formula here again. Now this is very similar to the formula I discussed previously, the one I didn't use related to the variance but it's something very similar to that formula here. Covariance of X and Y is the expected value of X times Y minus the expected value of X times the expected value of Y. And it works out to be one sixth minus zero times one, which is one over six, okay? So the next part is the correlation of X and Y, which is the covariance divided by the variance of X times the variance of Y. So that is equal to Actually, sorry, I'm missing a square root there. So that's a square root. So it's the square root of two thirds times two thirds. Which is just equal to two thirds. OK, so I'm back on track here. OK, so that is equal to one over six divided by two thirds, which is a quarter, one over four. So, so that's the answer there equals one over four. So it's one over six divided by two over two over 12 divided by eight over 12, which is one over four. Okay. They're not independent. Their correlations and correl and covariance is non-zero. Okay. So we actually know that they're linear related previously. Okay. From part B, I think actually not part A, a couple of typos here. Now, finally, Find the probability of distribution of z equals x cubed plus y minus one cubed. This looks awful, okay? But it's actually not really. So what we're gonna do, oops. So what we're gonna do, apologize for that, is calculate the values of x cubed. Now, so I have it here as x, okay? Well, what's the corresponding value of x cubed, okay? Well, x cubed is actually minus one cubed, which is minus one. Here, zero cubed is zero, and one cubed is equal to one, okay? Y minus one is, in this case, would be minus one cubed. That would give us minus one. One minus one is zero. Cube, the cube of that, zero. Two minus one, is one cube that one okay so essentially what we're doing here is we're adding in each case minus one and minus one add them together we get minus two minus one zero and so on okay so let's just uh, bundle them all up here we have z is equal to minus two okay the probability of that is one sixth so that's where we get this one here okay two thirds sorry uh, minus one this here plus this here, that's one over 12 plus one over 12, that gives us one over six. Zero, again, here, here, and here. 
and add them all up. That looks a little bit weird. Let's get rid of that. Add them all up and we get one third. There we go. And that's how we do it there. That's that's essentially how that one is done. Okay. So we'll leave it there. That's that's the answer, the full answer here down the bottom, that part there. Okay, let's leave it there.